you know, a lot of this stuff, um, it's just doesn't surprise me. And I called this 24 hours ago. I really did. I really called this 24 hours ago. I said, what you going to hear? You're going to hear about, this is, you're going to hear about sooner or later, you're going to hear another current or maybe a former NFL Hall of Famer or well-known former NFL player. It's going to be the latest one to try to go ahead and throw shade at Colin Kaepernick because he's he still remain unsigned. He still remain unemployed. And, you know, and it was just a shame to me uh, thanks to 93 Sports News, shout out to my brother 93 Sports News, and also shout out to BO 9023 uh, BO as well. Also, shout out to Cashmere G for even bringing me a heads up on this too on the live stream last night. Um, Warren Moon is, you know, he's one of those baby boomers, man. And you know, Harvey Superboy 223 and, and also myself as well as a few others. Harvey especially has told told y'all plenty of times about these baby boomers, man. These baby boomers are the ones that messed it up for my generation and generation after me. You know, when we say baby boomers, let me just definitely define that. Baby boomers are the ones who were born basically from the mid to late 1950s and and perhaps like early 1960s you know you know where they faced an overwhelming amount of racism in a system of a system of racism and white supremacy but see now they done got to that age now where you know they don't got comfortable now. They don't got their millions. They don't got in the little lane and say feel like they feel most successful. By okay, you got money, you got the house, you got nice cars, you got this and that, tell me so whatever, whatever. And the and and also the prizes like I'm gonna take a quote from Dr. Umar Johnson. You know they also got themselves a Becky or a Becky or um, or Brad. On their own, so to speak. You know, Warren Moon was recently on the Rich Eisen show. Um, Rich Eisen show, and, and Colin Kaepernick came up, and so, so this is what what I'm going to go there to right now. So, let me just full screen it up right quick, and let me just put this down here. They kind of, they they take they take advantage of every opportunity they can. Looking down the road, if something might happen. Well, football Hall of Famer Warren Moon here in studio. So Peterson's gone off the market. Kaepernick right. still is not. Right. Do you think Connor Kaepernick is being blackballed in the National Football League? No, I don't think it's blackballed. But I think there are certain teams that just won't have anything to do with him because of their stance on whatever he was doing, and they didn't maybe like the way that what what he did uh, with the with the kneeling of the flag, but. Uh, also, I think teams just don't want to bring him in because they don't want to deal with the repercussions of all of that. And then, the, and then there's a certain uh, uh, style of play that he's only good at. So that he can't go to every offense just because the Atlanta Falcons might need a backup quarterback. He's not a good for the Atlanta Falcons offense. He's not that type of quarterback. So you got to look at the offense that I think he fits best into, and that's where he probably has the best chance of going. He's not a quarterback for every offense in this league. So there's you. Essentially, he's not being blackballed by an entire league, but there are some teams that are doing that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure the Jets, for one. You know, you know Woody Johnson, um, everybody knows about his political affiliations and that, and I don't think he would bring in uh, Colin Kaepernick. So there's certain owners that just won't have anything to do with them. Well, for, for those people who think that ESPN is losing viewers because of the political leanings, allegedly, <laughs> they're going to love when Kaepernick shows up at the ESPYs tonight, as he is scheduled to be. Oh, really? Yes. We got invited. Easy. Well, some people can. <laughs> Still nothing to do. Okay. You, you seen that? I just looked at a little side eye at Rich Eisen, you know, which is the, which he at SWS himself. 
He's a SWS himself. Suspected white supremacist. I don't I don't put nothing past none of these crackers. No no. I don't put nothing past none of them. And Rich Eisen is no different. But Warren Moon Analysts I get from Mel. You know, it sound like he say he's pretty sure that Kaepernick is getting blackballed, but at the same time, he's doing exactly the same, saying exactly the same thing of uh, what Joe Montana was saying, his style of play, which is crazy. Um, Warren, it's his style of play that helped him lead the 49ers to the Super Bowl in 2012. Okay, it's his style of play that almost got him back into the Super Bowl the following season. See, they want to blame it like all this is on Kaepernick. And, you know, he, and then Warren Moon say some, something like, oh, you know, the kneeling of the flag and all this stuff like that. It wasn't even about the flag. Again, this is where, to me, like I say, Warren Moon is out of, he's out of touch. I'm, I'm just going to be real. You 60 years old, bro. You 60 years old. And I'm just being nice. I haven't even started to go ahead and issue you a butterball biscuit. I'm being nice right now. I'm really being nice. Um, God, man, I tell you. You know, Warren, you, you kind of forgotten before you got came into the NFL in 1983, 84, how you spun six, seven seasons up in the in the Canadian Football League, freezing your black ass off playing for the Edmonton Eskimos and stuff. You know. That's that's a picture of him in his first ride. That was Felicia Moon. You know, that's not the one I'm looking for though. Well, we're gonna keep that one around though. That's his current wife right there. Let me keep that around. I'm just trying to get one. No, that's not it. My bad. Same with the Seahawks. I'm gonna put that down in a second. Um, let's see. Let's see. What the hell is that? Shit. Hold on, y'all. Give me a second. I know I had this shit here somewhere. Ah, there we go. All them years that, you know, played six seasons with the Edmonton Eskimos. You know? Didn't even bother getting it started. Know, and so on and so forth because at the time the NFL didn't even want no black quarterbacks at that time. I mean, yeah, you had Joe Gillum and stuff that played with the Steelers before that prick Bradshaw took over. But I guess, you know, people tend to forget um, every now and then. But then this is, this is what happens. You know, he ends up going ahead and first of all, shout out to Cashmere G for giving me our ears up on that. You know, when he told me yesterday that, that Warren Moon is a super swirler, he wasn't lying. And I said, like, wow. I, I wouldn't be... I, I'm not surprised. Because, like, you know, like I said, like, that's that's how I go. That's that It is what it is. It is what it is. Unfortunately. And, and with, with, with her again, I don't even know who the chick 
ideas. That was his first flight that was with Felicia at the time. You know. Nice looking at the time though, but lately she been caught up in and getting all drugged up. I, I got to call her like I said, so I got to, I got to my subs, I got to keep it 100 and I got to keep it factual, you know. But the, sometimes I think these these cats, man, they just be a little bit been scattered. They want to go ahead, I, you know. He could have easily went out there and find him another sister, but, you know, that's... You know, he's down with the squirrel too, so I guess that, you know, cashmere, I don't know how they get down like that over in Seattle, but I guess that's, that's stuff like that. But my point is, is this, that he tends to forget. He tends to forget, like, he doesn't even address the issue of why Colin Kaepernick took a knee, refusing his regards to the national anthem. Okay? He, he like everybody else. He's parenting off of everybody else saying, well, you know, taking a knee for the flag and all that. No, he took a knee because he got tired of seeing, uh, of seeing um, slave catchers, aka the so-called fuck the police, murdering unarmed black men, women, and children. You, Warren Moon, and what, as a black man, what you went through in um, born in the 50s and the 60s and stuff, you should know better. But then again, this is what I say about these baby boomers, man. You know, people like him, Charles Barkley, David Clark. Um, oh, man, look here. A, a lot of these guys, man. But, you know, like I said, you know, you left your first wife. Like I said, I don't know whether she was on drugs or was going through something or whatever like that. And then you turn around here, you feel like now he feel like he's measured up to the, the, the to the so to the European because now you got yourself a you got yourself a Becky. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing like this. I mean, I say I'm the type like look, you can't help who you fall in love with like that. But it, but see, but at the same time, to me, like when it comes to marriages, it says it's a business. You know what I'm saying? It is a business, and I feel like that any time that a brother or sister marry, marry either one of the Peckerwoods or the Beckys, when it come down to the finances and shit, she gonna end up getting all the money. Ask Reggie White, may he rise in power. He didn't. Reggie White didn't even do nothing for his own, for his own people, his own family. He gave it all to Sarah. But he's the latest. Yes, last day was Michael Vick. I'm still mad about that one. Then Joe Montana. And, and I'm gonna tell you something. When it come down to these cats that's out here buck that they out here being bootlicks and stuff. Notice, like, and I, and it's sad to me even say this right now. It's sad to even for me even to say this, that you notice that it happens to be the the, the brothers or the ones that happen to be of a uh, a darker tone. That's that's doing all the tap dancing. That's doing all the boot licking. Now on my on my Michael Michael Vick video, um. The one I, I had posted like a few hours ago. Let me just go there for a second. I'm just going to show you all this shit, man. I tell you. I, I laugh at some of these stupid ass trolls. Let me just get up in here real quick. You know. Let me just get up in here real, real, real quick, family. Because here's, here's the thing. See fucking these old fuck ass fuck ass hate trolls they they starting to get ridiculous and out of out of control you know now i'm 
blocked them. When I got up today, look at this shit. You know, old man Braun. You can tell, see, this is a troll here in blackface. Let me just show y'all real quick. If I can click on to it. It usually will show it. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. See? Typical troll. No subs, no nothing. They make a little, they little bullshit ghost accounts and all that stuff. I laugh at him because he's a clown. Where he said about, you say, you could tell he white. You could tell he's a cracker. You know, say, Michael Vick is a black icon. See? Cold. That's cold right there. To show you this is a cracker. This is a peck of wood. <coughs> Excuse me. Colin Kaepernick is a half-breed racist. <laughs> yeah. Who calls black men niggers. See, this is a cracker. Because, see, ain't no black man gonna get out there and say that. And he even took the time to spell the word, even though he don't know what he's talking about. Distracted black youth from the actions of Micah Johnson and Eugene Long. <laughs> Hey Tori, Tori, hey, if come on my channel right now, if you you see this video, come on here now, Eugene Long. This jackass don't even realize it was Gavin Long. Dumb bitch. And hear what he say. Now he trying to try to cut it up, saying, Colin Crackernick. Oh, well, he's creative. I give him that. Said as soon as he got cut from the 49ers, that next season he was staying. For the national anthem. Uh no, wrong. He said that he would that's totally incorrect because for one, he said he wouldn't he wouldn't take a knee next season. He didn't get cut from the 49ers. Colin Kaepernick opted out of his contract. And on top of that, he said a direct every talking about saying Michael Vick will punch you in the mouth if you called him a nigger. Nigger. You bitch. Well, let me tell you something, old man Braun. You probably a LeBron lover. You know, if you hear me, Corey. <laughs> I know I like like Corey. Um Well Betty, yeah, let me just do my let me read this again. Y'all just go like this. <clears throat> Michael Vick is a black icon. Colin Kaepernick is a half-breed racist who calls black men niggers. Distracted black youth from the actions of Michael Johnson and Eugene Long. Colin Crackernick said as soon as he got cut from the 49ers that next season that's that cracker eating that skull tobacco chewing motherfuckers. He was stand for the national anthem. Michael Vick will punch you in the mouth. If you called him a nigger, you bitch. Okay. It's just it's just funny. Man, you know, I responded to him. I told him, like, you know, hello, pissan, another keyboard cracker talking shit as usual. And then I blocked him. I know that pisses them off. I know that pisses them off. I sent them a little, I inboxed them a little message, too. I, you know... You know, and, and, you know, shout out to the one LBZ. I told him like that. I inbox me. I gave him my address. If you want some, come get you some. Because I'll tell you like that. It's like the it's like the motel. Like that motel. You gonna check in, but you ain't gonna check out, player. You know, I don't worry nothing about him. I have a good time out here um doing these stupid ass trolls, you know. Plain and simple. You know, it's amazing how these how these Caucasian terrorists wanna they hide behind blackface and all that, and they coming to defend their pet coons and stuff. You know, I had another little buck dancing ass dude on here too, though. But I, I got rid of his ass. You know, shout out to CBF Five Star, shout out to Oak Town A, shout out to Paul Whaley, Kim, Sister Kimberly Johnson, Wayne Robinson, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all my subs, y'all my people. I love my subs, man. But keeping this shit in check. But it's it's a trip. It's a it's a fucking trip. Warren Moon, you know, like I say, these these baby boomers, man, they they messing it up for us and stuff. And then this is what they go do, you know. What he got in common is no different than what Sheriff David Clark does, what um Dina Borelli does. And y'all don't know who that is, though. I'm gonna do a series coming, I say in October, 
I'm, I'm putting that together too. But I know my series of White Thugs of Hell still gonna continue. But I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back on that. But this was breaking him. And y'all heard it out the mouth of Warren Moon, man. You know. You know. So you know. You mean to tell me that he couldn't find him another sister? So like they're like, you know, oh you love, but she gonna end up going here and getting that money. That's all. That that's all. That's gonna do. You know. But it's just a perfect situation. It's no different than what he did. You wait to at this age, get it, get him, get him Becky, doing like what Frederick Douglass did, Harry Belafonte, and I'm not going to knock out like Harry Belafonte. I'm, not, I'm really not. You know what I'm saying? But to get out there and throw shade at Colin Kaepernick like that was just absolutely ludicrous and stuff. Once again. As I always say, you know, we got to, and see, he didn't, he wasn't on code. He definitely wasn't on code. You know, you go in here and you trashing your fellow brother in the presence of mixed company, which was Rick Eisen and a few of them other, them other um, Europeans who operate the cameras and stuff behind the scene just so you can just get some airtime and stuff. And he called games and stuff for the Seattle Seahawks. I told y'all that it's getting close to preseason. Watch you gonna start seeing these old buck dancing bootlicks coming out, coming out the woodwork to try to go ahead, to, you know, to try to have Colin Kaepernick to conform or to bow down to white supremacy to have him to be, well, you know, you can be a plantation nigga. You know, Michael Vick talking that dumb shit saying that, oh, well, you know, Colin Kaepernick got to clean his image up, per se, you know, get get a haircut and stuff, get rid of the afro. That's just like me saying, like, they tell me, you know, to go ahead, I got to, I got to shave, um, shave my goatee, but see, now, you know what I'm saying, I'm going beard gang right now, so, you know, throw the gray back in there and show the wisdom. Because I don't recall what it say in the in the contract bargaining agreement of NFL that uh, NFL players shouldn't have an afro. As I stated in my last video, have they forgotten about you know shit? Would you would he say that? Would would Michael Vick say that to, to Randy Moss? Would Warren Moon would say that to Randy Moss or Terrell Owens or you know any of these other guys? Man, yeah, he yeah he got caught buck dancing. And he didn't think we were going to let that shit slide. Nah, it wasn't going to happen. Warren Moon, I'm totally ashamed of you, bro. I'm really ashamed of you. I'm really ashamed. But, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. See, you done got you, you, you got you a Becky now. So, now you feel like that you made it. I keep telling y'all, the cooning and stuff... There's no retirement plan. Sooner or later, y'all gonna get the picture. You gonna get your wake up call soon enough. And like I said, when it happened, I can't wait till it happens.